Hello friends, this video on neat reproduction is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 56. Which of the following is a hormone releasing intrauterine device? Multi-load 375, LNG 20, cervical cap or vault? Now if here if you talk about cervical cap and vault, they, they prevent contraception. So they are like barrier methods. So they are not hormone, they are not intrauterine device at all. Now option A and option B, both of these are intrauterine device. But if you talk about multi-load 375, this is a copper IUD. So this is not a hormone releasing IUD. So the correct option is LNG 20. So this is so LNG stands for Leve Norgestrel. So this is Leve Norgestrel 20. So this is a hormone releasing intrauterine device. Now what are uter intrauterine devices? Devices which are inserted in the uterus of female reproductive tract. They are of two types, copper IUDs and hormonal IUDs. In copper IUDs, small amount of copper is released in the uterus which immobilize the sperm. So the sperm cannot move and that is how fertilization is prevented. So the example of copper IUD is multi-load 375. Whereas in hormonal IUD, progestin hormone is released in the uterus, cervical mu uh, mucus becomes thick and sticky and this slows down the growth of endometrial lining. So example of hormonal IUD is LNG20. So this picture shows uh, an IUD. Question number 57. One of the legal methods of birth control is abortion by taking an appropriate medicine by abstaining from coitus from day 10 to 17 of the menstrual cycle by having coitus at the time of daybreak by a premature ejaculation during coitus so the correct option would be b that's because it is during this period that is between 10th to 17th day of the menstrual cycle that ovulation takes place because we know that ovulation takes place roughly at the 14th day so if you take some buffer, it is somewhere between 10 to 17th day. So this is the time when the egg is released from the ovary. Now once the egg is released, it ha there is a possibility of the egg getting fertilized in the next 24 hours, right? So if no uh, fertilization, if uh, there is no coitus between this time period, then there is no possibility of egg coming in contact with the sperm. So therefore no fertilization will take place and therefore there, there would be no reproduction will happen. So by abstaining from coitus from day 10 to 17 of the menstrual cycle. Question number 58. Artificial insemination means transfer of sperms of a healthy donor to a test tube containing ova. No, not really. Artificial insemination. This actually means that taking the sperms, some healthy sperms and putting it into the female reproductive part. So that's artificial insemination. So here the correct option would be this artificial introduction of sperms of a healthy donor. So now this healthy donor could be anyone. Yeah. So from a healthy donor, healthy sperms need to be introduced into the vagina of the female. That is artificial insemination. So here there is no concept of test tube at all. Question number 59. The test tube baby program employs which one of the following techniques? intracytoplasmic sperm injection, intrauterine insemination. Now intrauterine insemination means a, a healthy sperm sample will be directly uh, put into the uterus of the female. So that is intrauterine insemination. So that's not test tube baby program. So option B is not the correct one. Option C is gamete intrafallopian transfer. So the gametes are not transferred anywhere. Fourth is zygote intrafallopian transfer, that is ZIFT. This is the right option. That's because what happens in the test tube baby program is the female gamete is taken out from the female's body. The healthy sperms are taken out from the male's body. Both of them are fused together in the test tube. So when the male and the female gametes fuse, it forms a zygote. That zygote is then introduced into the female's body. So that is zygote intrafallopian transfer. So here fertilization, the main part of fertilization occurs outside the body, ovum collected from female, sperms collected from male, 
Now the fertilization is induced in stimulated conditions in laboratory. Zygote is formed that is also formed outside and then the embryo transfer is done into the female's reproductive part. So there are two ways of transferring it. One is the zygote is transferred into the fallopian tube. The other option is the zygote is allowed to grow a little more. That is a more developed embryo is directly uh, transferred to the female's uterus. So if you are transferring the zygote, then the zygote needs to be transferred to the fallopian tube so that the zygote can grow further and then it comes on its own to the uterus. And if you are putting the more developed embryo, then it should be transferred directly to the uterus. Question number 60. Which one of the following is the most widely accepted method of contraception in India as at present? Cervical caps, tubectomy, diaphragms or IUDs. So the more, most well accepted method of contraception is IUDs. The intrauterine devices where these devices are uh, inserted into the uterus of the female reproductive tract. As I said that they are also of two types, the copper IUDs as well as the hormonal IUDs. Question number 61. Medical termination of pregnancy. MTP is considered safe up to how many weeks of pregnancy? So up to 12 weeks of pregnancy it is considered to be medically safe. Question number 62. Copper ions released from copper releasing intrauterine devices make uterus unsuitable for implantation, increase phagocytosis of sperms, suppress sperm motility, prevent ovulation. So the purpose of copper is to reduce the movement of the sperm. So they do not allow the sperms to move further. So therefore the right option would be C and since the sperms are not allowed to move further therefore fertilization cannot happen because for fertilization to happen the sperms need to move through the vagina it needs to reach the fallopian tube where it will meet the egg. Question number 63 in a population unrestricted reproductive capacity is called biotic potential fertility carrying capacity or birth rate. So this is called biotic potential. So biotic potential is basically unrestricted growth of population. That means when the population is just allowed to grow as much as it can. So it's when the, that is biotic potential and that shows the maximum growth of that population. So biotic potential uh, indicates highest birth rate and lowest mortality rate. So huge number of people are getting born and less of them are dying. So that's biotic potential. That is the maximum reproductive capacity of a population. Question number 64. Amniocentesis is a process to determine any disease in heart, to determine any hereditary disease in the embryo, know about the disease of brain, all of the above. So amniocentesis basically is used to detect the genetic disorders as well as the chromosomal abnormalities. So and these are the hereditary disorders which gets passed on from one generation to the next. So the, it, it, this technique cannot tell anything about disease in any body part. It, it only talks about the genetic disorders. Question number 65. In India, human population is heavily weighed towards the younger age groups as a result of short lifespan of many individuals and low birth rate. No, that's not true because if there will be low birth rate, so obviously you will not have too many younger people. Long lifespan of many individuals and low birth rate. This is definitely not true. In this case, you will have more old people. Short lifespan of many individuals and high birth rate. Yes, this is true because short lifespan of individuals. So you do not have many people who are very old, right? At the same time, you have high birth rate. So too many new uh, human beings are born that therefore you have large number of young people, but you have lesser number of old people. So this is why the human population in India is heavily weighed towards the younger age groups. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.